Hello Photo Tuts. Welcome back to our continuation of our beginner's guide to Adobe Camera Raw. Now during our last screencast we talked a little bit about the adjustment brush and kind of introduced you to some of the things you could do and how you could use it to make highlights in the photograph and those things and we kind of hinted at that there was going to be more to the adjustment brush and more exciting things that we're going to be doing and that's what we're going to look at today. A few more features of the adjustment brush. We're going to look at the world's cheapest and quickest uh, dental whitening method and we're going to look at how to smooth out some blemishes and remove blemishes do some kind of uh, beauty uh, touch-ups and techniques to photographs now we're going to be using uh, another photo from uh, one of our listeners and readers at photo tuts and I'm gonna put his name in the show notes I'm terrified of mispronouncing his last name so you'll hopefully understand um, if you say check the show notes for who the photographer of this photo is this beautiful photo that we're going to be using here today and before that before we even start I'm just gonna just kind of mention that the, the adjustments and the beauty touch-ups that we're going to be doing uh, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to do this as if photographs all photographs require beauty touch-ups uh, because I do believe in just capturing the person and uh, and their beauty without touching up you know like you see a Photoshop done to extremes and magazines and covers to the the point where the person you know looks fake and, and that's not what I'm getting at I'm gonna show you what the tools do what you do with those tools and how you use them that's up to you now I wouldn't necessarily do these to my photographs uh, but uh, I'll show you exactly what the adjustment brush and how powerful a tool it can be for for doing beauty shots and for making these types of adjustments so the first thing we're going to do here is we've got a photograph open and I'm going to crop it a bit here because we got a lot of background here and I don't necessarily need to be looking at all of that so let's crop that down and let's give a little bit more space for the photo to breathe here just do that so that we can kind of eliminate some of that background and see a little bit more of the photo uh, full here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do dental whitening. Uh, the world's quickest, easiest, cheapest dental whitening uh, that you're going to find. So I'm going to zoom into the teeth here on our model. Get it really up close there. There we go. And it's not as if she needs dental whitening, but let's just show you what you can do with the adjustment brush here in that respect. So what we're going to do is go up here and click on the adjustment brush or hit K on your keyboard and that will bring it up as well. And if you remember the adjustment brush, we can do a lot of the things like exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation. We can adjust the size of the brush and all of these things uh, we remember from our last uh, screencast. So what we're going to do a little bit differently this time is we're going to turn on the auto mask and we're going to show the mask here as well. And uh, what this is going to do with the auto mask is it's going to kind of keep our adjustments within the tooth here and try not to get off into the gums here. That's what the auto mask does. It kind of looks for definition in the photograph where, where beginning and ending points are and where it has to stop and it keeps it in there so you don't have to be quite as careful. It's not perfect um, but I mean it does the job. Uh, so let's see what we do here. We got a feather of 74, we got flow of 30. Let's bring down the flow just a little bit and density of 100. Now what we're going to do, let's zero off all of our by double clicking these sliders here, zeroes us back and uh, what we're going to increase is let's increase the exposure and let's bring in a little bit of the brightness and maybe a bit of contrast as well. So then we'll start on the teeth. We got our auto mask turned on and we start painting. Now you're going to think, uh oh, what is this? Uh, I thought we were whitening teeth, not making the teeth blue. And the reason why that, of course, is we have our show mask on. So that's going to kind of show where we've been on the teeth. So we can see if it's staying within the tooth or if it's going outside of the tooth. And that's where that auto mask is supposed to keep it roughly inside the teeth here. You can see it, it, it does a fairly good job. You don't have to be super careful, but you still don't want to, you know, draw all over the place. So let's just add these teeth here and just keep on going until we got something that looks pretty close to good coverage. You'll notice that the edges here aren't quite right. You can go over there and try to redo those, whatever the case may be, and just kind of fill those spots in there too. So now it's like, ooh, that's weird looking. So we can take off the show mask and that'll get rid of the blue. Remember, if you don't like the blue color, uh, it, you can click on the, the color box here and you can change it to whatever color you want. Uh, if you're, you're familiar with red, you maybe like that color with, uh, you know, doing your Photoshop kind of masking. But you notice here when I have it in red, it's, it's kind of hard to tell because it, it, you can't distinguish it from the gums that are around. So that's why I chose blue because you can really stand out there. So let's just leave it at that. 
But again, let's turn off that mask. And now let's turn off the pin, which is the, what our selection is here. So we don't see that, doesn't get in our way. And if we do our preview of before and after, we can see how that looks. Now, zoomed in like this, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what this is doing to the whole picture. So we're just gonna try to fit in view. And let's do our before and let's do our after. Now maybe you think, oh, well, that's way too bright. Again, you can make adjustments to it. Uh, you can lower the, the exposure to whatever you want. Of course, you make, wow, that's horrible. <laughs> make them have black, blackened teeth. Uh, you can lower the brightness or the contrast. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just leave it something you can really tell. So boom, those teeth really stand out. Cheap and easy dental whitening. Your dentist uh, will love you for it. So that's one thing we can do. We can we can make adjustments to those exposures here. Let's also look at maybe cleaning up some of the blemishes that we have um, in the photograph. So I'm going to zoom in to the face here a little bit closer where we can see some of the blemishes that we're working on. And for this, we can actually use, instead of the uh, adjustment brush, we can use the spot removal brush, which is shortcut B on your keyboard. And for that, you just kind of start from the center and you draw a circle around any blemishes that you see. And that'll allow us to sample by holding down this sampling spot. We can choose from where we want to sample it from. So you pick a place that's kind of similar in, in tone and, and in light, and you can choose that. There's another blemish up here. Let's maybe take this one out, and we'll sample from... Actually, that first spot wasn't too bad. It's hard to tell when the circles are on, so you want to remove those. Remember, it's the show overlay, or the V key toggles those on or off. So if you click them off, you can see. Okay, let's toggle them off and let's do a preview. This is before and this is after. So you can see those blemishes are being removed. Now I could remove this little uh, mold blemish here, but I actually like that. It's, it's, it's cute. It's a nice, a nice little feature. So I'm just going to leave that in there uh, for the sake. So now we've removed some blemishes. Let's go back to our adjustment brush here. And we're going to make sure that we are set on to new because we don't want to add to to our teeth adjustment, we want to keep that separately. If you show the pins again, it shows you where, where you've been. So that teeth adjustment has its own pin there. And so we'll take that off. We'll have an add new. Now this time we don't have to auto mask because we're going to be doing overall uh, highlighting within the whole face. But this time what we're going to do to smooth out some of the texture here and the porous uh, look of the skin is we're going to turn our, let's put our exposure back down here. We're going to turn our clarity down and that's going to smooth things out a lot. We're going to bring up our feather, good our flow. Let's bring up our flow a little bit higher and yeah, the size of our brush. Remember the size of the brush? Well, it's too big. You can use the square brackets on your keyboard to increase or decrease the size of the brush. So let's, how about that? That sounds good. We have a nice feather on that as well. So what you do now is we're just going to start painting in and you might be able to notice here, it's it's tough to tell with the screencast how much you, you can see on the lower resolution. Well, we're just, our brightness here is a little high, actually. Let's bring that back down to zero. And our contrast as well. We just want our clarity to be working here. We're just kind of smoothing out some of the texture here on the skin. Some of these areas with the hot spots where you can see kind of the reflection from the flash and whatnot. Just paint these in, just some of this texture here, down on the chin. And again, this is something that a person can go overboard on and uh, make the person look like they're wearing some kind of smoothing mask on there. It looks really fake, and, and you'll, you'll see this in, in very bad Photoshop jobs, uh, beauty shots, where they're trying to make the person look almost fake, that they turn into plastic. Uh, you know, you don't want to get that severe, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to do that. Let's even increase the uh, the flow here so that there's more. It's as if more is coming out uh, and our adjustments are going to be even more pronounced. And just keep working over these areas until you have a texture that you want. Now, after a while, as you're doing these adjustments, you, you start to see, it's like, what am I doing? Um, I can't, I don't notice anything happening with this picture. And that's when you want to kind of stop and use your previews before and after. So if you look, there's before and there's after. And there's, oh, okay, I've really done, I've really done a lot. Maybe I've done too much now. And maybe, you know, you can zoom in really close to 300%, for example, and you can see there's your before and there's your after. So as you paint more on these areas and with more flow, these are going to just kind of, they're going to lose some of that clarity and they're going to smooth out more and more and more and more so that your befores and afters are going to be very 
very noticeable. So let's go back to double click on the hand icon to go to back to fit and view. And let's see overall, the the effect is going to be before and after. And for some reason it decides it's not doesn't want to show for me. And let's go back on the adjustment brush. Oops, there we are. There's before and there's after. So you can see we've smoothed out the skin a little bit. We've got rid of some of those blemishes. The picture's looking uh, looking, I guess, better. It's looking a little less natural, but uh, you get the idea. Some of the other things we can do, for example, if we wanted to do what we did in the last lesson of kind of increasing uh, some of the, the hair. You can't really see the hair because it's on a dark, dark background, so you can kind of add some hair lights uh, as if there was a hair light uh, on, the, on the model here. We'll start a new uh, a new adjustment here and let's bump up the exposure maybe a little bit of brightness as well and let's just paint in some highlights here so you can see some of the hair a little bit better a little bit more definition there that's too much um, so let's back that down a bit and let's see what happens before and after so we're just bringing a little bit more color into the hair if you want to have that stand out and before and after and one final adjustment let's bring a little bit more sparkle into the eyes so let's bring our zoom brush and let's draw a square around the eyes and we'll zoom right in there and we'll start with a back to the adjustment brush again and we got a new adjustment there let's do a little bit more exposure good some some brightness let's add some more clarity let's add some sharpness to it and let's bring down the size of the brush we'll hit our square bracket on our keyboard yeah that's a little too small and we'll just paint in the eye here so we're getting ourselves a little letting her brown eyes really shine beautiful there and if you notice that you're getting a little bit sloppy you remember you can turn on the mask and you can see where your overruns have been so I can see that I've I've kind of got a little sloppy there. We can go back to that erase tool and let's just kind of bring that down so that I'm not coloring outside the edges quite as much. And bring that down. Alrighty, so let's turn off that mask and let's see what uh, we've done here. This is our before and this is our after. Now we can see a little bit more sparkle in the eyes. Let's double click our hand tool to go fit and view. We can get an overall look at this so here is our oops go back to the adjustment brush so you can see what we've done so there's our before and our after again our before and after so the adjustment brush is, is a really powerful tool you can use it for uh, adding highlights to the photo uh, cleaning up uh, blemishes, softening skin, adding sparkle to the eyes. Remember, if we wanted to, in her eyes, we wanted to add a little bit more brown color to the eyes. What we could do is we could go back onto these adjustment brushes. Let's show the pins here. We'll, we'll select the that one right there. Let's show the pins off there. And what we could do is we could add a little more color to the eyes. So, you know, what uh, whatever brown color you wanted, you could boost that up a bit. Uh, into any particular color or any saturation. Again, you don't want to go too crazy, but yeah, that's uh, the adjustment brush is quite uh, quite amazing. We can before and after, again, and it does a lot of stuff. It's a good tool. Again, it's a tool you want to use, uh, you know, conservatively. So don't go too crazy on it, or your pictures will start uh, looking strange and, and unnatural. But with the adjustment brush and just a, a few tweaks here and there, you can really, really do some, uh, some great things to your photographs. So thank you for listening to our Adobe Camera Raw Beginner's Guide, Part 2 of the Adjustment Brush.